It gives me great pleasure and it's a great honor to be on the stage with these three um, mavericks, I'd like to call them. Um, all three have created institutions for art and more specifically contemporary art, which is my field. Um, they will each make a, a, a brief presentation, I think, to acquaint you with the, the institutions that have, they have each set up in Delhi and Bombay. Um, and I think um, one of the most exciting parts is that with the, all three institutions, we're just at the very beginning of these institutions and they will continue to contribute to the um, cultural landscape of Delhi for many years to come. Um, since this is a design conference and we're not here to really talk about art, I th would ask um, the, all three of the um, mavericks to when they're talking about their own institutions that they've created to try to um, concentrate on the subject that we're thinking about which is culture as an engine for the economy more and more as international people come to India I think we are starting to see um, that they're coming not only for the the traditional and the classical culture but more and more people are traveling to India for the modern and the contemporary we're seeing Chandigarh um, being added on to many itineraries as well as you know in addition to Agra and Jaipur. Um, and these three institutions that these mavericks have created um, are very much on that sort of map now. Um, so I would ask each of the, of, the, of the ladies when they're talking about their work to bring it back to this idea of what their specific institution is contributing to the city. Um, I think transforming might be too strong of a word. Uh, transformations often take um, place over many generations and often we're not even aware of transformations when they actually happen. But I would be very interested to hearing um, with these three institutions how they are feeling, um, what their audience is, um, what their plans for the future are, um, and how they see an actual physical effect from uh, the exhibitions and the institutions that they've created. Um, I don't know how we choose who goes first. Oh, is it in an order? I'm sorry. Who's, who, whose name is Kup Tasneem? Okay. Um, Dr. Tasneem Mehta is the founder, the, the director of the Dr. Baulaji Dad Museum in Mumbai, um, which when I first visited, I think in 1993, it was formally called the Victorian Albert Museum and was set up in the late 19th century as a museum for the applied and decorative arts. Um, Dr. Mehta has singularly, uh, almost single-handedly, uh, transformed the museum by a tip-to-toe, um, thorough uh, renovation and scrubbing to turn it into um, quite a glorious uh, edifice full of wonderful things that were already there, but she didn't rest on her laurels there. She has now um, Inst uh, instituted a, a, a program of bringing in contemporary artists. I think they're on the maybe the fifth, but done about four or five shows where she has invited uh, Indian contemporary artists to come into the museum and look at the collections and actually um, be inspired by them and to create works that are very much inspired and, and bouncing off the collection and the architecture and the history of the museum itself. So in that way she is creating what is now one of India's most vibrant contemporary art institutions on the foundation of a colonial museum. And, and um, I know the artistic community is um, very, very inspired by this development. Tasni? All right, friends, um, I can't see what's in front of me, and I didn't bring any notes, but good morning. Um, uh, I'd like to start by congratulating Rajeshree on this focus on design, which has been neglected for a long time. And interestingly, um, though we are seen now as a contemporary art museum on, you know, um, based on a colonial museum collection, it was originally uh, a design museum and it was conceptualized as one. Of course, over a period of 150 years, uh, it evolved and took on many other collections as well, one of which was the history of the city. So this is the building 
and it was a, in a, as you will see, in a completely neglected state. Um, and here you are, you can see, just for those of you who are not familiar with the museum and who don't know what its history is, it was in this condition uh, and it was restored by INTAC and we set up a management trust, the Bajaj Foundation, the Jamnalal Bajaj Foundation and Rahul Bajaj gave us the money and we were able to set up an autonomous management structure which is one of the reasons that we have been successful because we are not constrained by, um, a, by the, a very bureaucratic environment, though of course we are owned by the government, by the municipal corporation, so it is very much a government institution. And just very quickly to give you a sense of what it was like earlier, on the left you see uh, the, the unrestored museum and then the restored museum. And as you will see, well, I'll take you through some of the features. It was very much conceptualized as a museum about design. So in the 1950s and 60s, when it was put together, it was the first civic institution built by the people to honor the queen. Um, it, 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 they, they wanted to make it the grandest structure in Mumbai, and so a lot of it was imported. So it's interesting because the building is a very colonial building, Palladian exterior, high Victorian interiors, um, and beautiful elements in it, as you will see. Um, but the collection showcases the finest in craftsmanship and design in the 19th century in Mumbai and in India. And it was very much... Uh, it was born out of the Great Exhibition and out of a concern for the fact that industrialization was leading to a deterioration in craftsmanship and in design, something that we are concerned with even today. So here you see the restored museum. I, if, if any of you are interested in seeing the restoration process, which was a five-year process, where we not only restored the building, but we restored all four, four five thousand art, artifacts, as well as the display cases, retrofitted the cases. Uh, you can go onto our website, uh, just uh, type Dr. Bhaudajilad Museum and you'll come up to it, and you can see the restoration film. But here you get a sense of how it was so, the, the eloquence of the design. <laughs> And here you see this is a tympanum. We had no uh, information on this and we extrapolated from existing design features. It's just to give you a sense of that this is the roof. And here, um, there, there is a mixing as you will see also in the object uh, as a hybridization of, of design where certain features of Indian design were incorporated into uh, um, European form or European um, structures and just just to give you this is the columns and this is Trompe on the columns and the, this is the grand staircase again all of this was imported and because it was the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum in Bombay uh, the older sister of the Victoria and Albert in London actually and now we have a formal partnership with them uh, you can see the VNA logo. And here, we, when we were doing the restoration, we were very mindful of maintaining the, the feeling of that 19th century ambiance. And, and so we studied, did a lot of research, and I worked very closely with the craftsmen to create this chandelier, for example. And here, um, here is the flooring mint and tiles which were imported from London. A lot of the columns, the, the arches, the, the railings were, and the floor was imported from London. Mint and tiles here, you have some fan light windows and more decorative features on the door. And the collection, so the collection really um, was created by George Birdwood who was a towering figure of the 19th century, very much very close to John Rusk and William Morris and others, very concerned uh, with the deterioration, deterioration craftsmanship. And um, he, he was convinced that Indian design came from a, a 
a holistic tradition. Um, he was deeply concerned with the deterioration in craftsmanship, and, and this was an attempt to develop and showcase the best in Indian design and instruct local taste and aesthetics. And here you see some of the different um, objects. And here we have, I'm just showing you a very small selection of silver. Again, the intention was to showcase the best of design. Here you see very interestingly um, a candelabra, with, uh, w which is very European in form, but the decorative element is, uh, it, it, it's, it, it includes a snake. So this is very, if you are familiar with Mumbai, you will see that a lot of the buildings as well in Mumbai, a lot of the 19th century building, have this European form, but the embellishments were all um, taken from Indian design. You have the Gateway of India, which is like a Roman arch, but they have, it has chajas which are uh, taken from Gujarat, uh, traditional Gujarati architecture. So here again, just different soapstone objects and you see a combination of, of, of Indian and European forms. And as I mentioned earlier, that we retrofitted the cases to keep the uh, very the, uh, conscious, be very conscious of the fact that it represented a particular moment in history which we did not want to disturb. And it's very interesting because a lot of directors of museums from Europe come in and they say, oh, you know, this is exactly what our museum looked like, but it's gone because it all changed. And because in a sense that we were caught in a time warp, we were able to maintain and keep this original feeling. And here again you see uh, some beautiful bidri, armory, woodwork, um, okay, pottery, experimental pottery done at the JJ School of Art. So the School of Art and uh, the, the museum had an umbilical link, very similar to the way the VNA was kept conceptualized with the uh, School of Design. And then here is Jitish Kalat, who was the next artist who we engaged with. Both Sudarshan Shetty and Kalat are uh, alumni of the JJ School of Art, and, and the program involves uh, bringing artists from the School of Art back into the museum. Uh, and here we have one of Jitish's works, Annexation, uh, which is a stove, as you can see. It's a, a sort of a ubiquitous object in India but he's transformed it into this very um, interesting piece, which is a comet about, it's a, a stove, big stove because it's used to cook and therefore involved with sustenance, and takes off from that and takes off from the gargoyle designs that you see on all, many of the European buildings in uh, the British colonial buildings in Mumbai, and, um, and particularly in the friezes of the Victoria Terminus, now the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus. Uh, and he, what, he, what he showcases is the struggle for life um, that happens, you know, and the animals eating each other. And so it's a very interesting idea of what sustenance is and how the struggle for life is played out in the city. And if you remember, we saw gargoyles on the pillars on the external facade of the building. So he takes off from that as well. And then Shiba Chachi uh, was part of a, uh, a different curatorial initiative, which was to bring back artists who used traditional um, material as a inspiration, because Shiba works a lot with, with uh, miniature paintings and um, with traditional stories and uh, myths and legends. And here she has again worked with the idea of design, the very uh, dominant feature of design of the floor in the building, and um, refers to the anonymous craftsman and what you see who, has, who is not acknowledged in any of the, uh, in any of the cases, in any of the uh, literature. And um, he's showcasing his identity card. He's presenting his identity card and at the end um, on, on the statue of Albert, which dominates the vestibule in the center, uh, are the faces of, of craftsmen that she took. And here was, is Talur, um, Ellen Talur, who uh, was the, um, the, we have another exhibition on, so the second to last artist at, at the museum. Um, and he, um, it, it, again, this is, was a wonderful work 
um, in the central vestibule, which comments on, on craftsmanship, because this, this, this object, which is a bunker, um, is, it has been crafted by machine. And what you can't see here is um, uh, the termite marks, termite infestation that he, he grafted onto the uh, object to give a sense of the t deterioration in craftsmanship that is happening all over the country. And of course, the fact that everything is now machine made. And interestingly, that object, if you remove the frill, becomes like a guillotine. So, you know, it has many innuendos, and, and it was a wonderful exhibition. And again, what we have found is that the community is very involved. What it gives is an opportunity to those who would not go into an art gallery to interact with objects such as this and um, think out of the box. And we have, as I said, a collaboration with the Victoria and Albert Museum. So we've had a couple of exhibitions from, um, from their collections, but this one particularly focuses on design. And this is Olympic posters. And here we have um, some, some of the posters, the one on the right, which is designed by David Hockney. Um, this is the gallery. I'm just racing through this. And we have ways in which we have interacted with the community. We've had seminars, conferences. Uh, that was a seminar in collaboration with the VNA, where one of the VNA curators is speaking. Um, and it was a seminar on design. Here we've had a seminar with the MoMA. Uh, which is about how to um, change perceptions about contemporary art. Um, and here you see that the visitation that we get at the museum is about 500 to 700 a day on normal days and about two to 3,000 on weekends. And as you see here, we've had, um, we've had uh, we've, I think the largest visitation we had this year was 30,000 in a month. And the museum has just uh, embarked on a, a, a modern and contemporary Indian art history course. Uh, and we've had a phenomenal response to that. Um, we have about 30 students. And we have plans for a new building, 30 to 40,000 square feet to house exhibition, education, and conservation facilities just to the rear of the museum. Uh, we're going to have an international architectural um, competition for that. And um, we hope that uh, that is going to be, that will significantly transform the cultural environment in Mumbai. Thank you. Thank you, Tasneem. Um, I'd like to now introduce Kiran Nadar, um, who has been a collector for many years and has been building a collection based on post Indian art from the post independence period up to the present day, um, and now is operating the Kiran Nadar Museum, um, which is to showcase her collection. Right now, there's two spaces in Delhi open to the public. Um, the space in Saket is entirely um, from the uh, Ms. Nader's collection, and right now in a, the space in Noida is a exhibition curated by Gayatri Sinha of a younger generation of artists that is a loan show. Um, Ms. Nader has um, increasingly um, been trying to take on larger and larger um, her role as a collector and also going after things that are very, um, what we often call in the art world, museum pieces. Um, she's particularly um, now noted for um, um, buying some very major works by the moderns or um, perhaps uh, Baroda school artists um, from auctions abroad and bringing them back to India, and now is increasingly concentrating on contemporary artists and very large installation works, um, uh, again, the type of thing that's almost impossible for private collectors to have in their homes. Um, I know also the museums that we're seeing now are just the beginning of um, what is going to be a very dynamic and um, exciting institution for many years to come. Ms. Nader. Good morning. First, I'd like to thank Rajshree for the fantastic effort that is taken putting together this design show. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Kirinada Museum of Art and about myself. I've been an art collector for many years now, and the best thing about collecting art has been the pleasure of living with it. 
Over the years, I saw a lot of art, visited artist studios and museums all over. This slow but enduring process of self-learning has indeed been a very life-enhancing and fulfilling journey. At some point, I felt it wasn't enough just to collect. Sharing the art with the public seemed the most appropriate decision I have taken. I have been fascinated by the transformative qualities of art and the power to humanize and communicate ideas, emotions, and feelings through its varied formats and mediums. With this hope in the background, we initiated the setting up of the Kirinata Museum of Art, a private art museum. Of course, each day came with a new set of challenges, and some were within one's means, and some were without. The idea of transforming the city is a continuous as well as a long-term project involving numerous di dimensions. We at the Kirinada Museum of Art have taken many baby steps to create such a transformation in Noida and Delhi, fo focusing ourselves on building the museum and creating a museum-going culture. While the cityscape can be physically transformed through policy initiatives, aesthetic interventions by urban design, cosmetic facelifts, and by art projects in public spaces, the role of a museum is more in gradual and enduring, attempting to provide viewers an environment and an educative experience to in in inter internalize art and aesthetic sensibilities. In this brief presentation, I should speak on the topic of transforming the city experience, how our preoccupations at the KNMA have shaped into something more tangible and concrete in the course of setting up the museum while evolving and shaping its progress and role. The amazing progress of India in the last decade or so can be seen in its technological advance, advancements, urban transformations, and economic growth. However, there continues to be little emphasis on the understanding and appreciation of India's composite and evolving culture, its dimensions and richness, and its diverse art practices. It is extremely important that our cities transform not only industrially, but culturally too. I suppose the idea of setting up a private art museum was only partly out of my passion for collecting, but mostly that I was acutely aware that India certainly has a great limitation of space <clears throat> that can enhance and encourage the visibility and growth of modern and contemporary art. The lack of cultural policies is quite evident, and support from the government for art has been quite dismal. Private art initiative in India are a recent phenomenon, and as of now, very few compared to other Asian countries. China, as a nation, has been proactive and extended encouragement to art, and together it has more than 100 private museums that have mushroomed to significantly alter <coughs> this, uh, the situation both in Beijing and in Shanghai and with it, the city culture and its urban character. In several parts of the world, one has many significant private museums and collections, which result in the creation of museums which have, been, which have benefited the society for generations. One has also observed that the role and scope of museums have evolved and grown from being repositories of art objects to now spaces of continuous engagement. We thought of our museum as the beginning of an evolving journey that would grow and shape based on the unique circumstances and situations that we have rather than adopting a ready-made Western model. Uh, <clears throat> we first opened our doors to the public in 2010, showcasing the art from the permanent collection. KNA was then set up in a temporary location within the HCL campus in Noida. The location brought the HCL community of software engineers and their families in direct contact with the works of art displayed in the museum space. There were interesting moments of interaction with both novice viewers from the corporate sector and highly exposed, evolved HCL clientele. Despite our well-applauded shows and educational programs, 
we experienced difficulty in driving footfalls at the scale and the numbers that were available in and around Noida and Delhi. There were many reasons we gathered. The first and foremost, and the most appalling, is that there is a complete apathy of the larger public towards art, especially visual arts and its appreciation. Calcutta and Bombay are different as far as art awareness and art viewership is concerned. Uh, strangely, a new uh, museum in Ch near Chandigarh has already, is already drawing about 5,000 footfalls a day. But Delhi, which otherwise thrives with cultural centers and academies, has somehow, uh, has somehow a limited art community and spillover to the larger community is rather dumb dim. While all of us collectively make so much noise about lack of cultural space and art viewing opportunities, not knowing where our children can be sent for a holistic development, there's never enough enthusiasm to explore, explore, make the effort to check out new ventures and new places that have come up in the city. Other constraints that the public found it difficult to get to were was because of the way the museum was located. It was located in the IT campus in Noida, where public transport was not easily accessible. Additionally, an audience that was as yet uninformed and uninitiated into the pleasures and intellectual intricacies of art viewing reinforced our belief that then existed a real disconnect between art and the people. There was indeed a lack of developed museum going culture and in effect the museum had to develop its own reach. The pronounced lack of initiative in a diverse and vast country like ours to share and promote artistic interpretation as a powerful medium of communication had widened the gap between art and the larger public. As a year old organization it was indeed pertinent that we needed to strategize the mechanisms for community building. As a collector, I had thus far only focused on building the collection. With the museum, it was important to build the audience as well. Collectors have to focus on the collection, but the museums are for people. Like museums elsewhere, it was important to be inclusive and broaden the audience base. Until now, largely, largely art community, communities, artists and the art market were talking to each other, but reaching out to the larger public is a real challenge. In 2010, we started KNMA Saket, and we came in for a lot of criticism for locating the museum in a mall. In fact, one news uh, reporter called a museum in a mall an, an abomination. But we realized that for us, it was important that the museum get located in a space where it would get the footfalls and the necessary people. It was a bit like if we couldn't take the uh, uh, Muhammad to the mountain, it was important to take the mountain to Muhammad. Uh, in, in this part of the museum, we have uh, already had a number of shows, um, and uh, the current show that we are holding now is um, Crossings. Uh, uh, which is curated by Rubina Karode. And I'm just showing you uh, some of the images of the shows. Uh, the show we had before this had, uh, had a show on the city and the landscape where various artists had given their perspective of the city and the way they saw it. We do programs for schools, walkthroughs, seminars, publications. There are two shows going on, one at Noida, which is Cynical Love, Life in the Everyday with Gayatri Sinha, as curator, where she's taken younger contemporaries and showcased their work. And the Noida show, Crossings, is showcasing the collection at Noida, at Saket which we would all be appreciate if you would come and have a look at it and see how it relates to your life with the city. Thank you.
Thank you, Kieran. Um, I think from that presentation, we can see that the breadth of what the Kiranata Museum is doing in not only the materials that are being exhibited, but also the, the quality of the presentation and, and the exhibitions themselves. Um, because we're cutting short on time, um, Ms. Lekka Podar has graciously um, opted to bow out of speaking today. If I could just introduce her and tell her she is, is she with her, with her son Anupam, is the founder of the Devi Art Foundation, which now has a permanent space in Gurgaon, um, and currently has a... Well, that's going to be up to the organizers. Le do you want... Lekka has graciously said she doesn't need to talk. Okay, she's going to... Okay, so... Um, Lekka is going to say something, but um, I would just like to say also, I, I, you know, um, Lekka's involvement with, with, with art and design and culture is probably lifelong. Um, she's one of India's finest connoisseurs of not only contemporary art, but also textiles and tribal art. And I think it's important in this context to remind you that in 2000, um, she did open the Devigar Hotel in outside of Udaipur, which at that point was very um, avant-garde in taking a, a uh, well, I think it's a 15th century fort building and completely transforming it um, um, using um, Rajiv Saini was the architect um, that they worked on, the designer they worked on with that. But really, uh, in 2000, when Devigar opened, it was really something radically new um, that had never really quite been seen in India before. With, with, with building um, contemporary style and interiors out of um, traditional idioms. Um, Lekka, if you could just say a few words. Take one. Um, well, if you could just say, uh, just talk about um, what effect, I mean, how the Devi Foundation now has been open for about three years yeah. in Gurgaon. Um, can you talk about your audience and, 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 and what effect perhaps it's had on Gurgaon, um, if any? Uh, um, okay, first of all, I must thank Raj, really, for organizing this. And beyond that, I must thank my guru who's sitting here. Without Aman, Aman Nath, who uh, catapulted me into the uh, field of art and culture, my life wouldn't have been this. I really wouldn't have taken that journey forward, and I must thank him for it. Um, we started uh, Devi Art Foundation in 2008 because uh, we had an opportunity to use um, part of a uh, office building which my husband was building and uh, since uh, he was not using the entire space we got about 750 square meters of space which we could use so we started to do ex uh, we, the idea for opening the art foundation of course was because uh, people like you and all our friends at that point of time would uh, encourage the direct museum people, collectors, other artists, uh, gallery owners from all over the world to come and see Indian contemporary art. And one place you would direct them to would be our home. It reached a point where we had to hide to have breakfast because people would be trapezing around our home and we really couldn't even have time to have breakfast properly. So um, since this opportunity came uh, to use this building which my husband uh, was uh, making, we thought we'd open our foundation there. And uh, subsequent to that, we, uh, the, the idea also was to give young curators, or maybe actually people who are not curators, an opportunity to exercise curating and they would not really have to run around all over the country to curate a show because the, we did have an intrinsic collection from which they could curate. So um, we've done eight shows as yet and uh, all of them have been curated by uh, people who have never curated before. Some have been students, some have been artists, um, 
critics, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think what we are trying to do is also, in, um, as Kiran said, you know, the, uh, we hardly have an audience in Delhi which engages with uh, museums or foundations and things like that. So one of the primary causes is to audience build at the foundation, and that we are trying to do in various different ways, uh, encouraging schools to bring students. Uh, we did, um, in the second art fair, we did uh, something called a dream project, in which uh, children were encouraged to uh, write a, about a dream museum. And it was fascinating to see that in two days, 8,000 children actually picked up those cards and scribbled and wrote what their dream museum would be. It could be anything from a dream museum of shoes to museum of fish to museum of cutlery, anything that they wanted. Uh, and I think what we are trying to do in the future is that also bring in un other contemporary practices into uh, show being showcased in the foundation. So possibly uh, from this year onwards, uh, the second show that we will be doing in August uh, will have um, a, a research project done by Sarai, which they will be showcasing at the foundation. And so it's not going to be just contemporary art uh, all the time. And future shows are also planned that uh, one show in the year will be on contemporary art, and the second show will be on some other contemporary issue. I'm sorry, I don't have any slides to show, and um, uh, I mean, I do have slides, but you know, we are running out of time, and I don't want to take up time from the next panel. So if anybody has time, do visit us, uh, look us up on www.deviartfoundation.org and you will find the address. And if you have a moment to spare, do come and see, visit us in Gurgaon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, I can um, just right now at the W Art Foundation is an extraordinary exhibition of contemporary art from Iran that I um, uh, encourage anyone who has the time to see it. Um, thank you, all three mavericks. I don't want to call you ladies, but um, and I think the, the perhaps uh, joining tissue here is that all three are now approaching the museum as a living, uh, mutatable, living organism that isn't just about, um, you know, showcasing works for posterity, but more about, you know, it, uh, becoming a living part of the city with education programs, with outreach programs, um, to really create institutions that are alive and dynamic. And we thank you, all three of them. For